Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. The title of the message is, Why Your Prayers Are Not Answered. Why Your Prayers Are Not Answered. We'll be going into the matter of unanswered prayer. Why your prayers are not answered. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not answer. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, thank you for another great day you have allowed us to live, to gather here in your place, to listen to your word. Father God, we ask you that you'll fill each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. You'll help each and every one of us to focus only on your word. Help us not to think about the things that are happening in our lives right now, but just only give ourselves unto your word and to your preaching. We ask you that you'll be with the pastor, fill him with your Holy Spirit, Amen. give him the liberty and the unction from on high to preach a word with power and authority, and open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Convict us, Lord God, Amen. and the sins that we need to repent of, help yes. us to repent of those, confess unto you, and change for the better. We thank you and love you. Just say pray. Amen. 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 Why your prayers are not answered. It is a very common topic to discuss about prayer as a Christian, as a non-Christian, uh, with any religion, prayers are involved. And we already know the importance of prayer. And the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And you know that you have to pray. For some of you, you do pray. You, know, you may pray without ceasing. However, your prayers are not answered. Many of you may complain that, hey, how come God is not answering my prayer? And there are reasons why. When we look at our verses today, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, you know, a lot of times it's because of your sin. And if you don't solve your sin problems, we're not talking about eternal sin problem. If you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that part you say, I mean, you solved that already, which is the number one question you have to answer. What have you done with your sin problem for all eternity? I mean, if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, your sins are washed away once and for all. However, you know, as we live here on earth as a Christian, you know, our, we still have our flesh. And we'll still continue to sin until either we get rapture or until we die. The thing is that key to your relationship with God is your confession and repentance. As my brother prayed, right? If you do not confess and repent, like 1 John 1 and 9, you know, don't even think about it. I mean, if you're living in sin, it's just not going to happen. Who doesn't want God to answer your prayer in this day and age? Think about it. We live in a, such a wicked age where there is no discernment between right and wrong. Wow, Nothing is morally right anymore. Everything's subjective. I mean, when things are subjective, everything goes down the toilet. Because to me, you know, maybe that sin out there is not a sin. I mean, that's why we have a rampant increase in s crimes everywhere. Yeah. Judges don't care about crimes anymore, right? People don't care about crimes anymore. Parents don't care about their crimes. That's why when kids are raised nowadays, they have no moral. Wow. And you expect your prayers to be answered when you don't even raise your children right, when you don't even have any Hatred towards unrighteousness. California, I mean, I was driving 
going to work on five freeway, you know, there's a huge billboard. It says average gas tax for other states is, what was it, 29 cents. You know how much it is for California? One dollar and eight cents. Yeah. Like 89 cents more, like almost like, I mean, so, I mean, 79 cents more, is it? Almost 80 cents. That's a lot each time you fill up your tank. And you don't just do that. You vote for some stuff, it never really goes your way anymore for whatever reason, right? Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of theories out there and some of the factual matters out there. Mm -hmm. And you live in this age where your kids are taught certain things that they should never hear when they're seven or eight, yes. when it comes to gender ideology and a bunch of baloney out there. And not only that, right? You have to think about how you're going to feed your family a lot of times. With all these things happening, don't you want God to answer your prayers? Amen. Amen. However, because of your sins, you have many, many unanswered prayers. You have to understand, a lot of times, you become frustrated thinking that, you know, God's not answering my prayer because he doesn't like me, you know? He doesn't like my family, right? That's not the reason. As a child of God, if you don't have right relationship with the Lord, your prayer is not going to be answered. If sin has come between you and the Lord, I mean, don't think about it. Obviously, before I go into main points, you literally have to confess your sins. Right? If, you don't want, if you want to go any further about getting your prayers answered, I mean, confessing of your sin is the remedy for broken fellowship. Many of you have broken fellowship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How do you know? Because you don't have any relationship. Right. When a father or mother have no fellowship with their children, it's considered broken. Mm -hmm. What's broken when there's like no communication? I mean, a lot of times in certain cultures, like Asian cultures, like fathers are, I guess, seen as like kind of like a revered person, head of the household. And they don't really talk to their children too much. Right? right? They're known as like kind of like a, you know, quiet folks to their children. Mothers take care of all the conversation and work. And when suddenly they try to talk to each other, like father and children who hasn't, I mean, they haven't talked for a long time, there's always awkwardness. And there is like a no continuance. Why? Because the fellowship has been broken for many, many years. Right. Why do people get divorced? Because their fellowship is broken between, you know, married couple. Yes. And it's man and a woman, nothing else. That's right. Amen. You know, I mean, you, your fellowship is broken, then, I mean, you're not going to talk to each other. All you're going to do is send your divorce paper through your lawyers or whatnot. That's why it is very important for you to first, right away, before, you know, going into anything, you got to confess your sins. You have to, and you have to repent. You have to turn from it once and for all. If you don't, it will always separate you from God. It will separate you from having fellowship with God, and it will definitely hinder your prayers. Many of you guys, if you do pray, you may be going through certain things in life, and you're still like, man, I don't think I'm sinning. That alone, you know, gives you an idea how backslidden, how wicked you are. Yes. You always sin. You continue to sin. Amen. So don't ever think that, oh, you know, I solve all my sin problems in no. my life. I mean, that's what the devil wants you to think. When you think you're okay, that's when you're not okay. Right. When you think you're not okay, you're in okay state, you know? and that's how Christians should view it. I'm never going to be in okay state until I get rid of this wicked flesh. Yes. 
then when you realize that, you're like, yeah, you know, when preacher says 1 John 1, 9, I have to take it into my heart all the time. And when was the last time have you really thought about your transgression against the Lord and your iniquities against the Lord? Again, prayer is very intimate. Prayer is your personal relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, when I talk to my wife, you know, it's very personal. When I talk to any of you, it's very personal. We see face to face, right? And then you have eye contact, and then you have conversation going. But when you want to talk to the Lord, you have to be very personal. And in order to become personal, and in order to have a personal relationship with the Lord, you have to confess your sins. It is something that everyone knows already. I mean, if you did not know that you have to confess your sins after you've gotten saved, I don't know where you've been. Obviously, you haven't been listening to any preaching. You haven't been reading the Word of God. Or you might have been going to a wrong church. Because there are certain cults out there who say that after you get saved, everything's fine. You don't have to worry about sin anymore. But the Bible says, God forbid. Amen. Right? Man, go to Romans chapter 6 and 7. God forbid. Then, if you really want your prayers answered, then you have to solve your sin problems. You have to confess your sins. Then what are some of the matter of sins that's hindering your prayer life? First one is selfishness. Selfishness. When, you, when your motive of praying is selfishness, your prayers will not be answered. Let's go to James. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Again, many of these things you already know. You just need some good, hard reminder. You just need some good old kick in the behind so that you wake up. Thank you. James chapter 4, verse 2. Eat lust and have not. Eat kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Eat fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Verse 3, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Average prayer by average Christian nowadays is what? It's all about materialism. It's all about money. Right? Yes. It's all about fame. I mean, you do also pray for good health. But when you do pray for good health, do you pray because you want to go out on the street and preach the word? You want to go out on the street and spread the gospel? Or do you pray because you want to go to the club? You want to go have more fun? You want to go to theaters? You, know, you want to go to some wicked places? Is that why you want good health? I mean, if you do have good health right now, are you, using for, are you using for God's glory? I mean, if your motive is wrong, why should the Lord answer that prayer? He shouldn't. Right. Because that will prevent you from further sinning. Right? If you don't have good health, maybe it's because if you do good, have good health, you're going to do some wicked things. I mean, prevention is better than you actually doing it and really suffering. And when you ask for money, what's the reason? Do you want to show off to people? I mean, do you want certain things that's unnecessary? Right? You should be happy with all your needs, right? Yes. You, you will realize your wants when you go to heaven, once and for all. So when you live here on earth, just ask for what you need. I mean, the Lord's going to provide it. Yes. But once you start going after your wants, then what's going to happen? You know, there's going to be a broken fellowship with the Lord, and it's going to hinder you. I mean, that's why greatest, one of the greatest hindrances is your selfishness. Your selfishness brings about all the wrong things about a human being. Devil was selfish, right? I mean... You are of your father the devil. Before you've gotten saved, your father is the devil. Yes. And you act like your devil, right? I mean, you act like your father. Right. 
And even if after you get saved, if you let your selfishness control you, you're going to act like the devil. You know, when you have any kind of quarrel or argument or when you have fight with anybody, many times it's because of people being selfish. Why do people fight within the family? Because they're selfish. You know, no one wants to give in. No one wants to be compassionate. No one wants to be, you know, gentle, meek. No one wants to show some charity. No one wants to love other person at that specific moment. That's why he ask and he receive not, because you're selfish. You and I have to realize that we're born as a selfish person. We continue to live as a selfish person. But if we don't get right, what's going to happen? Don't think that your prayers will be answered. You could do everything you know you're supposed to do. Say. You go out there to street preaching where you read your Bible, you know, you teach Sunday school or whatnot. But if your motive is because of selfishness, then the Lord's not going to answer your prayer. I mean, for example, I mean, I, mean, I, I talk about Brother Calvin winning a couple souls to the Lord. But if he goes to everybody, not because he's joyful that God used him as a tool, to witness to lost souls out there, but he's f- starting to flaunt himself. You know what? I did it. Did you guys take some pictures? You know, can you post this somewhere so I could see? You know, remember who led him to the Lord. You know, I mean, usually it will happen. You know, sometime during street preaching. You know, and if he does that, you know. Lord doesn't get the glory. He wants to get all the glory. And it shows your selfishness. People who are selfish are not humble, by the way. Selfish people are very proud and stubborn. You say you love your wife. You say you love your husband. But if you're selfish, you really don't. Because selfish people always want their way. Selfish people always think they're right. Selfish people always think that, you know, I think you're wrong until you're proven right to your loved ones. Selfish people will never give benefit of the doubt. Selfish people will always, always be thinking about what could I have done to have gained more in my life? You always are thinking about you, 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 and you. You know, so when you look at your Christian life, have I been that selfish person? Have I always just thought about me, me, me? What were this what happened to Jewish people when they crucified Jesus Christ? He said, His blood be upon us. And what happened to the generation after generation afterwards? I mean, for 2,000 years. They were so selfish. They didn't care about nobody else. I mean, as Christians, you're so selfish that you don't care about anybody else. How do you expect Lord to answer your prayers when you're so selfish? I mean, do you truly care about, you know, your pastors, pastor's wife? Do you care about the ministry? Do you care about your brothers and sisters in Christ? You know, one of the great characteristics of Moses was that he was a very unselfish person. And how did that show? With his love for his people. Apostle Paul. I mean, he disobeyed the Lord because he loved his people so much. Right? Man, one of the greatest Christians, the greatest Christian ever lived, Apostle Paul. I mean, he had, he had his faults, Right? You know, when you read, you know, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 or 1 Corinthians 4, 16, be ye followers of me. And Apostle Paul said it. Not put me in a pedestal like God, but follow my examples. I love the Lord, and I want to do things that please the Lord. And if you have that kind of mindset, the Lord will hear your prayers. If you don't, don't even think about it. Why is that so important? 
Selfish people are not followers. Selfish people always want to be that person who wants to get all the glory, who will never follow and follow and walk, I mean, steps of Jesus Christ or the leaders. Selfish people will always have a rebellious heart. Think about it. If it's not my way, I'm not going to follow, right? Right. I mean, that's rebellious heart. Yes. That's why many Christians, especially so-called Bible-believing Christians, are so messed up in their ways. They're like, uh, you know, I know, like, pastor loves the Lord and tries to do what God wants him to do. But you know what? I'm not going to follow. I'm just going to go my way. And you end badly. History of our church ministry here, those with rebellious heart. Obviously, your prayer is not going to be answered. And on top of that, you're going to be gone. You can't stay. God will never hear and use folks who are selfish. You and I could make many, many mistakes. But God hears our prayers because of his great mercy and grace. And why? Because you're not selfish. You have a follower's heart. What does that mean? If you make a mistake and Lord shows you through certain people or the word of God or preaching, you're willing to change. You're willing to get right. If you don't have that kind of mindset, if you don't have that kind of heart, One day, you'll just become like Judas Iscariot. Everything is just about you. And even if your sins are exposed, you felt bad. You felt angry that people find out about your sin. Then how are you even going to solve that first thing that I mentioned? You got to confess your sins, right? And you got to repent. Repentance is turning away from it. But you don't because you're so selfish that you feel bad that someone caught you and it's been exposed. So instead of being like David, truly repenting, right, turning away from his sin, knowing that he'd done a great, great sin against the Lord, instead you go back and think, what could I have done better to not get caught? What could I have done better so that I could have hit it better? What could I have done better? Who did I talk to that I shouldn't have talked to? What did I post that I shouldn't have post? What did I do wrong along the process when my sin was revealed and exposed? And with that kind of mindset, what do you think is going to happen? You got to be just like those 10 spies. Who brings that bad news? You're, not gonna, you're never going to be like Joshua or Caleb. You're always going to be selfish when you think it's not going to benefit you, when you think you're going to get hurt, when you think you know, something bad's going to happen because of your sin. You, you don't own up to it. Selfish people will never be honest. Can you think about it? Selfish people, usually, when they're put in a spot, they'll give excuse after excuse after excuse. Amen. Why would God answer someone's prayer when all they do is give excuses? Yeah. Man. Would you want to listen to your kid or answer their prayers for you? All they do is excuses and excuses and excuses. I mean, Jade, Jade just turned six, right? And then, you know, Jade tells the dad, you know, that I turned six, and I'm going to be a better boy now. I'm a year older. And the dad goes, hey, all right. That's one thing. One thing I just want you and me to keep, you know. You're a kid. You're growing up. Even myself, I feel like a big kid sometimes, you know. Hey, you know, you kind of make mistakes. Just be honest with me, right, when you do it. Yes. And then the dad goes, yeah, I promise. I promise, dad. And, you know, he ate cookie that he wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. 
because he, goes, he couldn't resist his sweet tooth, right? But daddy said, don't eat it, son. And suddenly, when daddy sees him in action, and Jade goes, daddy, it wasn't me. I mean, he, I mean, you filled him eating it. And then you show it to him, because it wasn't me. That's my brother. I mean, even though they look alike, but I could differentiate, you know, Jade and Aeon. Yeah. And remember, you know, you're still, you, you got to give me more cookies, right? Because that wasn't me who ate it. It was my brother. And as a father, you going to give him more cookie? No. I mean, never. I mean, just lying and he's giving excuses. What if he came up clean? What if he really confessed? My dad, I'm really sorry. I was, I was really hungry. Hey, you know, I had sweet tooth. I ate it. I'm really sorry. I don't want to do it again. Yes. And as a father, man, you feel bad for the kid, but you still discipline him like yes. a good father would do. But next time when you have that cookie, you just offer it to him because you love the kid and for being him honest about Amen. it. But as Christians, when you deal with your heavenly father, you, all you do is just try to give excuses. Come on, Why would he answer your prayer? I mean, as a human being, you won't answer any other's prayer. And as an almighty God who is perfect, omnipotent, omniscient, right? Yes. All knowing, and he's the fairest God of all. Why would he answer your prayer? When all you do is give excuse after excuses after excuses, and you never get right with the Lord. That's, That's why you have issues. That's why your prayers are not answered. Mm. And you're so selfish that it's not me who's causing me not getting answers prayer. I mean, get answers for my prayers. It's my wife. Man. Man, man. My, if my wife's faith was better, maybe the Lord will hear my prayer. Amen. You know, you better repent. Yes. You are the problem as the head of the household. Amen. And wife, same thing though. It's my children. And it's my husband. That's why the prayers are not answered. I don't know. I mean, certain things may be true. I mean, if, if your husband is not working or living as a godly Christian man, yeah. But before that happens, you have to look at yourself. You have to see where you are in fellowship with the Lord. And obviously, children, you children always blame your parents, right? Man, I don't have that shoes. I don't have that purse. Man, I didn't get that surgery yet, you know? Uh, where's the car? Where's the house? You know, where's that iPhone, whatever it is? Galaxy, you know, where is it? You don't look at yourself. You don't understand what your parents have to go through to make a living, to feed you. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're shielding you from many of the wicked stuff in the world that's going on. Sometimes you have to be frank about it. Why don't you go out there and labor for eight hours? And you're like, oh, I'd rather study. I'd rather be at school, you know, instead of being out there in the hot sun, you know, digging trenches yeah. or being out there working or having the stress of the corporate world yeah. where everything they teach is or communicate is all this gender ideology and, you know, you have to follow every all of this, you know. And then you try to live their day live their life for a day or two. You're like, oh, oh, man, I appreciate you, Father. I appreciate you, Mother, right? You and I are so selfish that we always get blinded by our selfishness. Amen. Hey, you're blind. You still don't see it. Even during this preaching, if you don't see how selfish you are, there's no hope for you anymore. I mean, literally. Yes. Amen. I mean, I mean, if you don't think that you're a selfish person, there's no hope. And you're that person who's going to rebel one day, just like Saul. Saul didn't start out just a rebellious person right away. I mean, it was progression. Some of you come to our church and you've been saved for a little bit. Listen to our internet ministry. You've been saved, you know, for a while. 
But if your purpose is because of your selfishness you come to church, because of your selfishness you listen to message, eventually you're going to turn out like Saul. You're going to rebel. You are not going to be a follower. Again, I tell you, if you want God to have mercy on you, if you want God to show you grace, if you want God to answer your prayer, you have to have followers' heart. Amen. What does that mean? You have to have a soft heart. What does that mean? You have to have a confessing and repenting heart. Amen. Without it, you will never, ever really, quote unquote, experience God's answer prayers. All you do is just complain about unanswered prayers. You know, it's a quite, how should I say, you know, it's very disappointing. And it's sad to see when someone at a church do well, they succeed. Instead of being happy for that brother or sister, first reaction is, how come it didn't happen to me or my family? And you're fake, you're a hypocrite when you congratulate them. Deep inside, you're complaining to God. God, how come I didn't get that promotion? God, how come I didn't get to buy it? God, how come this, 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 that, and that? And the Lord's telling you, you're so selfish. Why should I, you know, answer your prayer? When you can't even be happy for your brothers and sisters in Christ. That goes to our second point. You know, you're selfish. That's why the Lord does not answer your prayer. And secondly, because you're double-minded. You are double-minded. Let's go to same James chapter 1, same book, James chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 7. James chapter 1, verse 7. James chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When things are good, you're nice. You're good to others. When things are bad, you're hostile. You know, there's like a nails in you, so we can't even get closer to you. You're just burning. Right? And in front of strong people, you act all you know, nice. In front of weak people, you become all strong. As a Bible believer, you should never have that kind of attitude. You should never be double-minded. I mean, you don't be a hypocrite, right? Yes. Treat everybody the same. You know, if this brother has a lot of money, am I going to be like, hey, you know, I'm not going to preach against the sin that you don't like because I don't want you to leave our church, you know, because you bring that money, you know. I mean, never. If I were to be like that, you know, I want the Lord to just strike me down. Amen. You know? That's just defiling, yes. you know, his word and his ministry. And Christians, you cannot treat people differently because of their status. You never can, especially as a Bible believer. If you treat someone different because of their education, shame on you. I mean, the Lord should just take your brains away. Right. I mean, think about it. Sure. Every person in this world, has, and after you got them saved, you know, saved Christians, Lord has given each one of us different abilities, yeah. different understanding knowledge. Yeah. Who are you to start going like that brother or sister is dumber than me? You know, that is smart as me. I'm sure some of you have thought like that, right? I mean, some, there are stupid actions, regrettable actions, right? But why are you looking down on their intelligence, right? right. Or, I mean, obviously money, right? Uh -huh. Or someone who has more money, like you suddenly like, oh, man, I have to treat that person different. Then someone maybe who doesn't have as money, oh, yeah. I could treat them, you know, more harshly, you know. There's less benefit for, for me. Ah, you know what? I'm going to spend more time with someone who has more money. Oh, I think I'm going to get something more out of that person or the family. And you're like, ah, you know, it's not going to benefit me. 
And all the while you're telling and you're giving testimonies, you know, I love all my brethren. You know, from A to Z, I love all my brethren. But no, deep inside, you have the devil's heart. All you want to do is go on your selfish ways of liking only who you like and hating all the people that doesn't meet your standard. If Lord had to do like that, I mean, none of us will come up to his standard. Right. Don't you ever realize that there's always someone better than you? Yes. In this world, there's always someone better than you. Amen. Yeah. Even if you're, you think you're the best of the best, there's always someone better than you. Yes. And if you don't realize it, Lord's going to make you, you know, really, really know it and feel it. And as a Christian, you pray for everybody the same way. Amen. Right? Poor or rich, you know. I mean, good looking, bad looking, yeah. whatever it is your standard. Everybody needs to be the same. Right? right? And this is totally different from, you know, equality that other folks are preaching. Amen. Or, you know, schools are teaching. But in the body of Christ, you know, we're all the same. Yes. So you have to treat each other with compassion and love and pray for each other the same way. Amen. I say you can't be, you know, double-minded. You can't say one thing and do other. Right? right? You, can't, you can't be like also when you're sick, you pray, and you're not sick, you don't pray. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what we, that's, that's like how pitiful we are, yes. right? When we need something, we pray. When we don't need something, yeah, go, you don't pray. Right. Well, that, that shows your double-mindedness. That's good You're only going to the Lord, you know, when you need Him. Oh, man, isn't that our kids? A lot of times they only go to the parents like, when they need something. <laughs> and then when they don't need the parents, they just neglect Him, right? until they get a good old spanking here and there to realize their double-mindedness. That's why you have to understand, man, there's something wrong with my prayer life. I mean, number one thing is, you know, me not confessing and getting right with the Lord, but amongst that is because of my selfishness and because of my double-mindedness. And then thirdly, uh, your hindrances to prayer is your unforgiving spirit. You guys are so righteous, self-righteous in your own way. I don't make that mistake. Even if I did, they shouldn't do that to me. <laughs> wow, who do you think you are? You know, Dwight L. Moody once led a lady to the Lord, and he, she had no assurance of salvation. And Moody wanted to find out what the trouble was. He had to repeat the disciples' prayer. When he got to the part where he says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, she wouldn't repeat it. When he insisted that she repeat it, she didn't. He said, what is the issue? What's the problem? The woman screamed. I'll never forgive that woman as long as I live. I mean, do you guys have that kind of attitude? And usually it happens between, you know, after you got them saved. I don't want to break anyone's bubble, right? People think that after they get saved, they come to Bible-believing church, they think they're, quote-unquote, they're all the angels, right? But they find out that they're the biggest devils <laughs> later on. You know, that's, that's, that's true. Amen. And then I'm sure she went through it. <laughs> I'll never forgive that woman as long as I live. When Moody reminded her that unless she would forgive, God wouldn't forgive her, she said, do you mean to tell me after what that woman did to me, I've got to forgive her? And Moody said, no, I don't mean to tell you that. I mean, God told you that. Amen. <laughs> yeah, God said it, right? right? The Bible says, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you, Ephesians 4.32. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
lot of unforgiving Christians are the ones that who talk about their love the most. You know, a lot of them, a lot of hypocrites out there. Love your brethren. You know, love your wife. Love your husband. Love your children. And then goes, hey, what about that person? No, no, no. Can never forgive that person after what they done to me. I don't know. You have to have a forgiving spirit. I mean, there are always cases where, you know, some brothers or sisters, they never get right with the Lord, right? I mean, what can you do about it, right? But if they come to you with a true repenting heart, there is no reason for you to not forgive, mm -hmm. right? Right. Well, you already know, you know, you can't hide your true repentance, if someone comes up to you, I mean, ask your children, ask your wife or husband, when they say sorry to you, and you already know when they're not really sorry. They just say it with their mouth only, right? But when you know that if any brother or sister have wronged you, but remember, you could do the same thing. Yes. You could definitely do worse. Amen. If they come to you and truly, you know, confesses and, you know, ask for forgiveness, you know, you got to forgive. And if that situation were to happen, are you willing to forgive? That's the thing. Right. If you have a forgiving spirit, God's going to answer your prayers. But if you have unforgiving spirit, it's going to hinder your prayers. You know? That day may never come if someone has wronged you, and they may never come and say sorry to you, right? Mm -hmm. But if they do indeed do that, are you willing to forgive? Yeah? Oh, man, they've done so much damage to my family. They've done so much damage to me. They've done so much damage to my everybody. The Lord forgave you, and God said to forgive. Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, even if you don't want to do it, you do it. Amen. God said to do it. Amen. Bible said to do it. Yes. Uh, are you going to be your own Bible? No. Like, uh, be kind, one another, tenderhearted. You know, forgiving one another under one condition, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven. No. You believe every word that he says. Yes. Don't be a Bible corrector. Amen. At this point of your life, you know, you shouldn't. So if you have unforgiving, unforgiving spirit, get right with the Lord. Amen. And along that note, grudges. Man, some people have grudges, right? Yeah. James, you know, Let's stay in the James. Go to James chapter 5. Go to verse 9. James chapter 5, verse 9. James chapter 5, verse 9. The Bible says, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Do you have grudge against anybody? You know, man. A lot of people who have grudges, they're just mean people. Yeah. You're that meanie pie, right? You know, like, obviously, you don't have, you can't forgive, or you, you're like, yeah, yeah. That person laughed at me, at my misery ten years ago. I fell on a rainy day, I slipped, and then I fell in the mud. Nobody was laughing, but that person laughed, I remember. And that person might not have laughed at you. That person might have just smiled, or maybe they weren't even laughing, but you thought they were laughing. You don't even know the true story. And you go, you know what, man, I hate that person. No. How could they laugh at me? How could they laugh at my calamity? And you never talk to the person. You know, I mentioned, you know, Dr. Rockman has many stories where, like, these two deacons, you know, for some reason, they had grudge against each other, and their families always come to one door, and other family goes out the other door, or comes the other door, and they come to this door. Like our here, they only come that way because they know other person will come that way. And they only exit that way because the other family only exit that way. 
I mean, if you have grudges against anybody, you better get rid of it. Yes. Is it so hard? Go to the Lord. Ask the Lord to give you a you know, loving heart. Amen. You're no better than any hypocrites out there, yes. right? You got to be better than where you are right now. Amen. You can't be a, just a little kid, baby, all your Christian walk, right? right. I, mean, I understand for little tiny babies to have a grudges against other babies, you know, who wronged them. You know, they're just babies. They don't know better. Right. But as a Christian who's been saved for years and many, many years, you shouldn't harbor grudge all the time. Right. You're not going to have peace. And not only that, you should see your prayer life. Right? The Lord's not going to answer your prayers. It's going to be a hindrance. And that goes in hand with bitterness. And you become a very bitter person. I mean, Colossians 3.19 says, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Well, again, right away, you know. Husbands, if you're not getting your prayers answered, because something's wrong between you and your wife. You're bitter. You, know, you have to get rid of that. Amen. I mean, you can't be like complaining right now. They're different than 10 years ago. They're different than one month ago. You know? When you committed to each other, you committed to each other. Till death. Yeah, till death do you apart. A lot of times, families are messed up because there's bitterness. Yep. You know? And if you don't get rid of that bitterness, against husbands, your, your wives, and any other person here against whoever that is, whether it's your family members, church members, even unsaved people out there, eh, you're going to have hindrance to your prayer life. We all go through troubles in life. Yes. I mean, that's a given. And as a Christian, you have to accept it. Amen. As a Christian... I'm going to go through trouble. Go to the book of Job. Job. Go to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. Verse 1. Job chapter 14. Job. And we're talking about Job. Who knows a thing or two about trouble and suffering and everything in between? Job chapter 14, verse 1. The Bible says, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. We have trouble. Just because you got saved doesn't mean that you don't have trouble anymore. We all have troubles. Your husband, your wife, your children, your pastor, pastor's wife, Sunday school teachers, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Everybody has troubles. We're born into trouble. Amen. Then if they make trouble, they're human beings. Yes. You have trouble, you're a human being. You have to get rid of that bitterness. You have to make sure that me, I want to be followers of Christ. And one of the best characters that Christ had, he had compassion. Yes. You have to build that compassionate heart. Yes. You know what? You know, they're flesh. They're human beings. They might not be mature Christians either. You know what? They're, I could make the same mistake, right? And if they've gotten right with the Lord, or even they haven't, I'm going to just leave it in the Lord's hand. No reason for me to be bitter. Because it will eat you alive, brethren. Last thing I want to see myself, my wife, any of our church member is going through some kind of a bitterness that will stop you and that will break your fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. You got to let it go. You got to leave it in God's hands. Amen. That is the way things stand right now 
you have many unanswered prayers because you're not dealing with your sin problem correctly. And amongst them, again, your selfishness, double-mindedness, your grudge, unforgiving spirit, your bitterness, that will all displease God. And your prayers will not be answered. That's why before it's too late, and before it gets too late, having that follower's heart, you follow the Lord, right? You know, the Lord's showing you. Yes. Get right with the Lord. I mean, what, why would it stop you from doing it when you truly want to have a right relationship with the Lord? Then you could freely claim the promises, right? But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 2 Corinthians 9, my grace is sufficient for thee. Then you could claim the promises. The Lord's going to hear you. I'll end with this. And you have to understand what kind of God we have in our heart as our Savior, and we serve. Matthew 19. Let's go to Matthew 19. Matthew 19. I realize, you know, as I walk this, you know, Christian journey, as you gain more experience, you understand some of the Bible verses more and more. Matthew 19, verse 26. Matthew 19, verse 26, the Bible says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With man, this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. When you have right fellowship with the Lord, even the most impossible situations, you know God will answer your prayer. I mean, God wants to. Because God wants to get all the glory anyways. If you realize that we're selfless follower who realized nothing, he goes, okay, let me show it to you. My child, it's impossible in the sight of man, but it's possible with me. And I know you'll give me glory. I know that will be a great testimony. And I know because of that, your faith will grow stronger and stronger and stronger. Your faith will grow stronger and stronger. Have you ever thought about it? Were you ever in a situation where, man, I'm in an impossible situation? And then you call everybody, right? You call your friends, you call your lawyers, you call your family, you call everybody. Boy, you, man, you don't go to the Lord. But those of you, and as you will understand, as you grow in your faith, and as you see more of your prayers answer because you have right fellowship with the Lord, Verses like this will really hit you. Man, even though I'm in an impossible situation, I know according to God's will, he'll make it possible. That's where, you know, when you read book of Hebrews, you know, where people did things by faith, even though they can't see, you truly understand. And for some, if you don't understand, you're not there yet. Get yourself right with the Lord. And those of you who are there, I know you'll be smiling. I know you'll be you're like shaking your head because you know what God can do for you. And so much cliches are out there. But when it comes to prayer life, when it comes to why your prayers are not answered, just go through what you know, I've talked about. If you, if you have to make a check mark at any one of them, get right with the Lord. Yes. Because most likely you're going to check mark everything. Amen. You know, it's not just, you know, just one separate. Usually it's one that clumps into one, leads to another. Think about it. You and I should be claiming God's promises instead of always resisting and always giving excuses, not being forced right with the Lord. It's time for you and me to really fix that broken fellowship that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. It is always going to be ongoing. And if you don't do it right now, if you don't do it today, you're not going to do it in the future. 
unless you get really, really spanked badly. You know, by that time, you might be too late. You have lost time. You have lost your health. You have lost many, many things. And all you do is go regret and regret. Think about it. Are your prayers being answered? Why is your prayer not answered? You really have to search your heart and get right with the Lord. Let's pray.